trial chambers are by far the biggest feature in Minecraft 1.21, and as they've remained more or less the same for months now, it's time to show you how to find them, why they're incredible for the early game, and how they desperately need improvements for the rest of it, and since it's a Sunday, I guess we can do so through a seed. Hello, I'm Abyx Toycat, and welcome back to Seed Sunday, but with a twist, because anyone can use a seed like this one, IBX Trial 51, and can go over to the coordinates they know a trial chamber's found at, and have an incredible start to a world. Isn't it a shame we can't craft mossy cobblestone pickaxes? Okay, that's just a me issue. Let's go underground. Aha! Spawn to a trial chamber in just over three minutes. That's pretty darn nice if you ask me. It's a little dark in here, but you can make do, and you can have some of the best loot of your life with next to no effort required. However, this is missing the point that for the average player, you won't actually find a trial chamber in three minutes from your spawn. You probably won't even find one in 30 minutes, which is something I want to address and hopefully fix with today's video, because as great as the loot from these places are, it only matters if you can find them, and finding them is a little complicated if you don't know the one simple rule, which is where these things try to generate. How is a breeze here already? Oh no. However, the more interesting question is how do you find a trial chambers on a random given seed using in-game Minecraft mechanics, i.e. not using chunk base to get in there, and the simple answer to this is to look at how the trial chambers generate. They choose to generate only in the deep slate layers of the game, i.e. between 0 and minus 64, however, they are specifically meant to generate between minus 20 and minus 40. This means that you would expect the best layer to mine for a trial chamber is not minus 20 itself or minus 40 but instead exactly in the middle of those two numbers at minus 30. This is something that sounds right on the surface and, you know, we could take it as fact and go with it. However, I personally wanted to test this theory myself and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make three separate mines right here. I'm going to dig in a very, very long straight line going forwards from here at y minus 30 and then do the same at minus 40 and minus 20 to see the difference in how soon and how many trial chambers we find. So, with that said, let's get mining. Although, not using a pickaxe because that would be insanity, but instead using magical Minecraft commands. <laughs> okay, I accidentally, while trying to, uh, I set up a command that was going to do the mining for me, but I put it in the wrong direction, so it started mining this way instead of that way, but apparently I was right next to a trial chamber, perhaps the very same one from before actually, and so as a result I have found an additional trial chamber. However, would I have found that same trial chamber if I was mining all the way up at y minus 20? The answer is, or y minus 18? The answer seems to be no, although I would have eventually found some tough bricks which would have been a very good sign there was a trial chamber below me. If I did it all the way down at y minus 40 itself, then the exact same result is probably going to be true. Yeah, that's right. We're going to dig into the tough brick. So there is a sign there's a trial chamber there, but you're not digging into it. And like Goldilocks deciding what type of porridge she likes, going at y minus 30 means I end up exactly inside of it, which might be your goal, but also might not be. So now going in the other direction from this exact trial chambers, because it's a good enough uh, place as any to start, let's see what happens if we go this way at these same three coordinates. We're doing this same experiment of three different layers, and so if we find a trial chamber at one of the layers, but not the other ones, this is an interesting indication that one would be better than the others, whereas right now they seem to be even, uh, just the only difference is whether you'll find more diamonds and other ores, and also where about in the trial chambers you'll spawn. However, these are basically inconsequential. Look how many diamonds we are finding, by the way. So many on the right there. After 1,000 blocks, we found nothing at Y minus 29 or minus 30, although a lot of lush caves and dripstone caves and diamonds indeed. Whereas at Y minus 20, we find this very suspiciously sized cube inside of a lush cave. Do you see it right now? It's kind of hilariously sized, and if we were to mine into that cube, I have a good theory about what we might find. Oh yeah, look at that. It's a trial chamber all the way up here. So, the advice that the Minecraft wiki gives you on the matter is actually the tiniest bit misleading. They tried to generate between y minus 20 and y minus 40 as a start point, but can go much higher above and below that, and so mining at y30 would have meant I missed this. 
Just for curiosity though, would mining at Y40 have led to the same result? We'll leave everything else equal, the, the X position, uh, obviously, but we'll be digging down much lower down. All I see is so much lava. I, I didn't realize you could get pits this big, but yeah, I'm going to keep looking through it. Oh, let me out of this nightmare. <laughs> Even in creative, lava is too powerful to, to do anything about. The answer to that question is no, we would not have. If we were digging at Y-40 or Y-30, this trial chamber that we've been searching for for a thousand blocks would have been literally six blocks above our head, which is real depressing. However, is this a one-off case or is this how trial chambers generate? Well, taking a closer look at the trial chambers, you'll see this is a really fun one to generate. So, same seed from earlier, IBX trial 51, if you want to use this, let me show you the most interesting trial chamber I've ever seen. It's a trial chamber, but with a dungeon attached. Isn't that fun? I mean, it's goofy. It might result in your death, and it looks like it's missing one of the trial spawners, but you have some free zombies. Wait, that's not a zombie spawner, is it? It is a zombie spawner. It looks so much like the trial key. Have you ever realized that? Okay, small tangent here. But look at, look at the zombie spawner, and then look at the trowel key and tell me there's not something suspiciously similar between these two items. Anyway, the interesting thing about this trowel chamber is even though uh, trowel chambers go between minus 20 and minus 40, if you were to read the wiki very basically, this is actually the starting point of the trowel chambers, and they generally tend to go up from there and not down. Trowel chambers are a very vertical structure, and even if the base of it is at y minus 26, hypothetically, there are lots of rooms that deliberately go up and up and up, which means that there are lots of places you would miss otherwise in these high up altitudes. In fact, as you can see right here, this goes all the way up to Y minus one and Y zero, uh, which means that you can find trial chambers really pushing the ceilings and pushing the limits of what they can actually spawn into. And that means that if you go all the way down to Y minus 40, there are some trial chambers with nothing down there. So it seems as though either, you know, kind of going back to the previous point, there is a big bias towards the upper uh, y levels of a trial chamber and not towards the lower ones. Obviously though, we still only have two data points, so what it's worth doing is using the slash locate structure trial chambers true command, which will only find us the trial chambers we haven't been to, and check out a few more and see what y levels those ones are at. And so, after much staring at structures in spectator mode, I can now reveal to you the three Y levels of the trial chambers closest to me, and you can see that there is some variance, but they, uh, and indeed, there is a huge uh, difference between the highest and lowest, uh, something you'll see best in this third structure right here, but interestingly, they always tend towards the upper end of that estimate, and sometimes can even generate very, very deep into the cobblestone layer, something you wouldn't expect, which means you can be digging all the way down at Y17 and potentially land yourself into one of these, something I find to be very fun. The other thing I find to be fun is this last one right here. You might not believe how variant it is, but trial chambers are a very vertical structure, and it's weird because they seem like there are lots of individual rooms that generate next to each other, but that's not always the case, and let me prove so with this trial chamber right here. So, I started all the way at Y15, where there's cobblestone out and around me. However, if I follow that down, the entire room, down to a staircase, I get this main hallway staircase room, which I can then follow down. Down, and if I follow this room into a door over here, I'm already at Y minus 17. I've gone down 30 blocks, but there's another staircase. It's actually a double or a triple staircase, followed by another, another staircase. And this will take me all the way down to Y minus 35, where I connect to another one of these tall horizontal rooms, which I can take down to the bottom. And you know what that will lead me to? A grand bottom of this structure that is Y minus 45, about 60 blocks below where I started. There is huge variance in where you should dig to these structures, and in this particular case, at Y-45 and Y-15 are both extreme ends of that, but yeah, basically, there is lots of variance. However, the overarching uh, data from randomly digging and also from looking at some of these structures is that clearly the best way is to go a little bit higher than you might expect. Funnily enough, this also means that the best way to find copper has also changed from digging at its correct Y level to digging around at about Y-15 uh, to 20, specifically so you can find a trial tame chamber, because this this is the place to find copper. I need to mention that every single time we talk about the trial chamber, there is a near infinite amount of copper right now, and there's next to no good reason to use it, but you better believe I still want to take it away anyway. In fact, I want to destroy a whole trial chamber at some point, but that's for another time, because right now I need to point out the bigger problem than the fact that, yeah, there's a lot of copper that isn't too useful, and uh, it's generated at a slightly different layer than you'd expect, but the bigger problem is, as always, parity. <laughs>
One of the sadly expected things about Trial Chambers is that they'd be found in different places between the Java and Bedrock versions of the game. If you don't know, full seed parity was achieved in the Caves and Cliffs update, but this only applies to the naturally generated worlds and not the structures in it. This has been applied now to the Trail Ruins from last year, as they fixed them on Bedrock, however, every other structure has different placements, even for structures with the same rarity. However, in something that is becoming more and more common and really shouldn't be applied for a new structure, there is a different level of rarity between the Java and Bedrock versions, something which doesn't make any sense in a gameplay level, but is even worse when you see what it actually looks like on a gameplay design level. And to show you that, I'm gonna put on my hat and show you the magical website that can skip through all of this. Wow, I put on the hat and all of a sudden I'm in the web browser and in fact I'm on Chunkbase right now. Chunkbase was a website designed a long time ago to help people find certain structures on their seeds. For many people it's now an essential part of play and the upsides and downsides of that for Minecraft as a whole are still being felt to this day. However, the most interesting thing about this website is it allows you to compare the exact same seed between Bedrock, uh, both before uh, the experimental and afterwards, but also Java. And so we can say Java 1.21 experimental on the same seed versus Bedrock and with the same scale, you can see this is 3,100 here to 2,600 there and then 1,200 down there. So about a 3,000 on the uh, Z axis, 6,000 on the X axis scale, you can see that where you see just one, two, three, four, five, six trial chambers on the bedrock version, you see, oh, is it is it going to be more? Yes, it's uh, a number that I literally can't count. I mean, I, I could count, but I'm, I'm choosing not to because it is so much higher. Trial chambers are not double as common as is the case with nether fortresses or bastions, but instead are about 10 times more common on the Java version when compared to bedrock. This is a serious concern because a structure which is basically everywhere and can just be funnily accessed whenever you feel like it, there's two right next to each other over here on the Java version is so, so rare on the Bedrock version that traveling thousands of blocks and not finding one is not just a possibility, it's a near guarantee. Look at this, if you happen to be digging in a straight line that didn't have to intersect with any of these points, then you would be going for thousands of blocks before you found one. This is a very big deal and it's another case of parity not just being a fun buzzword, but actively being something that harms the Bedrock version of the game. If you believe in parity so badly you remove good features from Bedrock, please make sure you add the decent features from Java to Bedrock in exchange, otherwise you're just ruining one of the versions of your game. That is something that I can imagine they will be fixing over the course of development, but there's one issue even bigger than that that is perhaps worth fixing. Uh, but first, I think it'd be fun to show you how powerful trial chambers are if you do happen to know where one is, if you are, uh, you know, happening to be, uh, if you happen to know a seed, like let's say IBX Trail, uh, oh wow, there's nothing near that. Or IBX Trial 51, perhaps. If you happen to have a seed where you know there is a trial chamber very close to spawn, then how can you utilize this? Well, let's take off my helmet. And oh no. And now I'm back into Minecraft. And also there's a timer on the screen. And I bet that if I were to start moving, it would work like a speed run timer because this is a challenge to see how fast I can find a trial chamber on a seed where I know where it is. This is not the standard in Minecraft, or at least it shouldn't be. It's not what it's being designed around, but it is what a lot of people are doing. And it's a fun proof of concept to show how fast this works. This isn't on a perfected seed. This is just on a seed that happened to have one nearby. So immediately after getting some wood, we can use the wood to craft myself. You know, I like plank stone. Oh no, I crafted some. <laughs> oh, I just lost one of my woods and I have to craft another one. That's a that's a dumb recipe, but I hit it by accident and so I'm going to live with that. Then I'm going to make myself a crafting table, use the crafting table to make myself a wooden pickaxe. And that wooden pickaxe, pickaxe is going to take me a huge amount of time to dig down with. In fact, being 40 seconds into a run and having a wooden pickaxe only is actually pretty darn slow. I think most people would rightly and fairly argue. However, we're going to stick with it anyway. We're going to dig just a single block in a wall here because, oh, all of a sudden uh, there's actually a cave on the other side of this very wet cave, and if we could just dig down from somewhere around this, as it just so turns out we can, then we'd be able to avoid all of the pain from that, and so that is my strategy right now. We're going to then cut off the water, which is currently trying to suffocate me right now, place one block over there above me, and now there is no more water to do that with, and we're digging right down. We're going very far places right now. Gonna find a really, really thin ravine right here. Very, very wonderful. Gonna follow it to its logical conclusion over here. Here. And then once we've done this, I just have to dig enough blocks so that I can get a wooden, a stone pickaxe. Because fun fact, you can actually use a uh, cobble deep slate. You can't use a uh, mossy cobblestone, but you can use cobble deep slate to make a stone pickaxe, which we can then use to finish up 
uh, the main part of this because we're at Y minus 12 and within just a few blocks we'll be in a trial chamber, I hope. If everything goes according to plan, if everything doesn't go according to plan, then I don't know, I, I, I guess you'll be seeing this on the cutting room floor. But just over here, I think you'll find I'm in a trial chamber. That is pretty fast, right? If you happen to know it's right there. Um, this is a entirely pointless speed run. I don't think it will ever be picked up as a category, but it's fun to think about how optimized that could be if me just picking a seed blindly and d deciding to find the fastest route through it can do it in two minutes. There is no doubt that you would be able to do it much faster and you'd be able to access great loot such as this. Oh, wait, actually, that's an iron axe. I kind of want that. <laughs> I guess I can't have it though. You can access great loot like that iron axe, for example, or like uh, whatever's in this pot, a single piece of iron. It's a really exciting world, let me tell you. Two stone pickaxes as well. However, um, the interesting thing about this is not the fact that it's doable. I think it's very fun, uh, and I don't want to, like, diminish my own uh, fun little hobby, which is I love to do things faster and faster, speedrunning, if you will. Um, but I also, I want to say it solely because of the fact that, actually, if you get here in the early game, it is pretty powerful. It, it, it seems balanced now, but by the time we're getting trial keys and opening them, it will be very, very powerful for this early game state. To be two minutes into a Minecraft world and be here is maybe OP, you might even go as far as to say, compared to every other route that you can get loot through. However, Imagine being in this exact same place and having full gear, not running around aimlessly because you desperately just want something. Uh, what in here would really tempt you? The exact same loot that is going to be a godsend for me at this early point in the game is going to be mostly not that valuable to anyone later in it. If you already have a shield, maybe even one that's enchanted, is two half durability shields that entice can offer? Is Fortune 3 or Bane of Five Pods 5 on a book really going to change your mind on things? The answer is Probably not. Once you get better and better at Minecraft, the trail chambers cease their utility just a little bit. Most of their utility becomes the fun that you can have, more so than the actual uh, rewards that you can get. And this does pose a bit of a problem with the structure. It is so, so, so valuable to find early on, but its value and utility does start to go down. And this is something I think Mojang could easily address. Whether or not they add the trims to the game, I don't think that would be good enough by itself to go through an entire structure to feel like you've accomplished something wouldn't just be a single trim at the end but instead they need to do something much more like the end city it has really powerful chests but also has the elytra as a unique selling point the same is true for the bastion remnants with soul speed and the ancient city with swift sneak and so i have to imagine they have something planned like that for the trial chamber i am very curious to see right now it's a very fun structure it feels very good but it's missing that little something at the end isn't it speaking of missing something a lot of people have been missing Seed Sunday, and so I forget as we do this special one right here, I quickly explain where Seed Sunday has gone, and also explain to you that it's sort of coming back. So, the thing about Seed Sunday, it's one of my favorite series on this channel, but for a while, I think we got stuck in the loop where, yeah, after an update comes out, people love to check out new seeds, and that's when I think it's most interesting to share. Uh, however, every single week, we were just going through broken seed after broken seed, and we're at a point now where there are enough people who can exploit the Minecraft seed algorithm to the point where there are just so many that they all are kind of meaningless. I think if we are going to talk about seeds on this channel, it needs to be ones that are useful to the day-to-day -day player, and that's why even today, which was focused on the trial chamber, I wanted to share with you a seed which is fun, it's been fun in my attempts to do some speed running to the trial chamber at least, but also it will provide a different survival experience being in a mega tiger with a trial chamber below. Providing these unique experiences is what I want to do with the series, and I won't be doing as many of them until I'm sure that that's what can happen, and I hope that you understand. But for now, I hope you all enjoyed Seed Sunday. Make sure to check out the streams we'll be doing a few more of, and I look forward to seeing the updates to this structure and maybe its unique selling point over the coming weeks over the course of these snapshot and beta videos. Looking forward to seeing you there, because for now, I've been IBX Toy Cat. I hope you all enjoyed this video, because I'll see you next time. Bye!